Hello, kitty cat. Oh, I'm being a fussy britches today. When well, is uh, when uh, isn't she? Stay. Well, she got her claws clipped, so she's kind of mad. <laughs> she had a manicure, and that made her pretty angry. Aww. And then she got a sniff of my nail polish and had a little sneezing fit, and that made her really angry. <laughs> you had a hard night, huh? Yes. Mine is a life of constant torment. What were you doing in the nail polish, kitty? She was in my lap and I opened a nail polish and she, you know, she's a cat, so she sniffs things. Oh, what's she's this? Like, hey, is what's it... that? <laughs> so, of course, it was your fault okay. somehow. Maybe, maybe we don't take my shirt off on the air, okay? Thank you. Don't care. Don't care. No fucks. I ran out of fucks years ago. Years ago. She it is amazing how she will look at absolutely anything yeah. but the she camera that when she's mad at us, too. Like you can hold her. You can do this. And if she's mad at you, she'll be like. She 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 you know, can this. There's no human right up in my face. No, 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 no. You can't tell me that that cat does not understand what a camera is because she will focus her attention anywhere. She's really smart. The new con she started to run, if if for whatever reason I happen to get up around breakfast time, I'll I'll feed her so that Dan can get a little extra sleep. But then as soon as Dan gets up, she starts carrying on like she hasn't been fed to try and get that extra feeding. She's like, hey. Hey, it's food time. Food time, right? Food time. And there was one day he fell for it. Because he didn't hear me be like, she's already been fed. She's a little con artist. You need to like get like a system where you have like post-its or like fridge no. magnets or something. You need, like, like the magnet you have on the fridge, like clean, dirty, like cat is fed. Cat <laughs> is not fed. Because she is. She's, she's a little manipulator. Ah. Uh. Well, that is what they do. All right. Well, we have our usual connect co connection collection. Why do I I word not good tonight? Words, 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 words. Word bad. I bad word. I words very good. I good words. You know what's sad is we can talk like that and people know exactly what we mean. That's that's what what we've we've reached in the English language these days. Yeah. The internet has just destroyed us. I get to the point at work like if it's right before my lunch break when everything anyone says to me I just hear food 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 food. All right. Intro time. Each week, Catherine and Radio <laughs> to their audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What crazy. the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I'm, crazy I'm starting with this one because really it's a headline, but until you actually, it, it's one of those things that's like, is this news or jackass? Why not both? <laughs> Comes to us from Russia. Russian driver replaces car tire with log. Oh, that's not what I was picturing at all. That is not what I was, I was figuring he like sliced Right. And, and made a wheel. And shoved the axle through it. And but I was gonna, no. Well, that's ingenuity. But no, that doesn't work. That's what is going on there. That that that's not functional. Photograph an odd looking vehicle driving down the streets of St. Petersburg quickly went viral on Monday. No. After being published on a page dedicated to traffic accidents in Russia's northern city. Photograph the splinters flying in every direction off that shit. The photograph taken by a witness from his car shows a vehicle with a wooden log instead of a left rear wheel. The guy was driving 50 kilometers an hour while everyone around pulled up watching him. 
It was a pirate car. <laughs> it had a peg leg. <laughs> this, this is like the anti-MacGyver. Yeah. This is like, you know, MacGyver used to do, he would take all sorts of ridiculous objects and do something amazingly clever with them. Yeah. He'd take, he'd be like juicy fruit and a baseball and, you know, a, half a cat. And suddenly there was an explosive, you know, but this is. This is more MacGruber. <laughs> this is more Magoo. Have you ever, have you ever read the Shel Silverstein book, The Missing Piece? No. So it's um it's a children's book and it's you know there's this thing that kind of looks like Pac-Man and it's trying to roll but it can't quite roll because every time it hits the missing piece it flattens out uh -huh. and then it happens upon a little wedge shape that's exact that exact shape and can't roll because it keeps on just bouncing and they get together and then they can roll and I feel like this person didn't read that story. <laughs> I feel like this person doesn't They're trying to run their car on the wedge. <laughs> I feel like this person doesn't read at all. Yeah. I'm still imagining, like, imagine you're walking down the street and that car passes you and suddenly, <laughs> like, the splinter equivalent of the shrapnel in Tony Stark's chest comes flying at your face. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's, that's not safe. If this car passes me on the highway, I'm going to stop because I'm going to be absolutely certain that I have fallen asleep. This car's going down. I'm yelling timber. Who did that? I can't read their whole name. Make a candid something something. Why did they do that? If your username's really long, my version of Irk will not show me your whole username. Brevity is the source of wit. Why just... Soul of wit. Something. This, I, I guess he thought maybe it would be like a sled. Except for that, you need snow. Generally, sleds operate better with snow. Yeah. I mean, it's Russia, though. But there's no... I just figured it'll fucking snow eventually. <laughs> it's got to snow sometime. I mean, fucking Russia, right? Russia, it's going to snow. It's cold there. It's long, long, it's big, Plus, it's heavy, it's wood. Putin has that weather control machine, right? He's got to have one of those things by now. It's long, long, it's not a tire! I think that was actually the original cut of that yeah. skit, but they didn't think people would get it. So our next one, I, I normally don't do stories where people get hurt unless they've done it to themselves. Unless they done deserved it. This guy done it to himself. <sighs> ha! And, and when, when I'm reading the headline, I can't help but think, how? How? Beer truck runs over man in Columbus after he steals it. Huh. Columbus, Georgia. According to Columbus police, they say early in the morning, a man stole an 18-wheeler beer truck and then proceeded to be run over by the truck. <laughs> That's a vindictive fucking truck. <laughs> Investigators say it was parked and running when the driver got out and went into the Circle K on Victory Drive. The driver came out and saw his truck was gone. He called 911 and officers were able to quickly locate the stolen semi. They say 56-year-old Gregory Miller was driving it. Eventually, police caught up to Miller near the Bojangles. Oh, I miss Bojangles. Um, however, they say as Miller was trying to get away, the truck somehow ran over Miller. Well, I mean, that truck was full of beer. <laughs> it's, it's just in the story, it's... The truck somehow ran him over. Right. That's a bit of a leap of journalism, wouldn't you say? Like how there's some blanks to fill in there. Yeah, it's it's like... How did he come to be outside of the truck? It's like... While and... stealing it. Was he trying to push it away? <laughs> 
<laughs> People are pointing out his name is Miller. It's Miller time. S this reminds me, you remember the old Shakespeare play where he did Exit Pursued by Bear? Yeah. Because I forget, that. I forget too, but it was just pretty much he didn't know what the fuck to do. So, all right, a bear chases him off stage. Why? I don't know. Because somehow yeah. he was run over by a beer truck. And then the truck runs over. The end. He's gone to the hospital because of a serious wound and possibly a break to his right leg. You lucky you're not dead. It's an 18 wheeler. Okay, did your on the channel wins. Exit pursued by beer. Well, there you go. <laughs> Shakespeare didn't die, he just took over reality. I mean, as I understand it, <coughs> excuse me, driving one of those rigs is very different than driving a normal passenger car. Yeah, it's it's there's shit that's going on you have to the, be... like it's a whole different world than driving a regular car. But I gotta think staying inside wouldn't be that difficult a matter to navigate. Like, did it have an ejector? <laughs> Do they? Did he hit the wrong button? Maybe. Is that how, is that how 18 wheelers work? I don't know. Maybe it was one of, maybe it was, you know, a reject from cars and it was a sentient car and that was not the right driver. And it was like, well, no. Well, let's be fair. They're all a reject in cars. They're all cars. Maybe cars all of our cars are going to come to life and run us over. Well, Stephen King already did that and it sucked. I mean, luckily, I just have a little Honda Fit that weighs about 10 pounds. So I think I'm going to be OK. It's, so many questions here. It raises more questions. And who yeah. sees a beer, tr a truck, an 18 wheeler that's running and goes, mine? That makes a lot more sense than the people that see a running ambulance and decide it's theirs. At least this has beer in it. <laughs> well, the ambulance theoretically has morphine in it. Yeah, but you got to know how to work a fucking syringe. And you can't drive and shoot up at the same... Beer is just much simpler. Than <laughs> it's just less of a hassle. You just... Anybody can use beer. You don't have any skills. <laughs> Anybody can use beer. And that's one to grow on. Um, all right. So our next one is... We have a, a there's a running joke that's been going around for years now, the, the first world problems joke. And it's it's the premise that people in the the more wealthy parts of the world, their problems are unique to them because they of entitlement and et cetera, et cetera. Like, oh, my God, I ordered a venti pumpkin spice latte and they only gave me a grande. And they only charge me for a grande, so I can't even, like, get the venti without totally getting back in line. That's my basic white girl voice. Well, it looks like uh, Zimbabwe has decided to try to import the whole concept of the first world problem. Riot erupts after Zimbabwe's new Mr. Ugly deemed too handsome. What? Harare, Zimbabwe pageant judges have crowned a new winner of Zimbabwe's fourth annual Mr. Ugly contest, upsetting supporters of the crowd favorite who called the winner too handsome and prompting rioting at the event. Judges on Saturday chose 42-year-old Myson Sere, citing his numerous missing front teeth and a wide range of grotesque facial expressions. Uh, William Masvinu, who had held the title since 2012, and his supporters mobbed the judges upon hearing their decision, claiming that Sere was, quote, too handsome to win, and his ugliness wasn't natural since it was based on missing teeth. So he 
had he used ugliness han- enhancing techniques all of the above said that riot really did turn ugly who enters an ugliness pageant who wants to win an ugliness pageant <laughs> is that a point of pride and I'm the ugliest person in Zimbabwe. And to start a riot. Does that get you laid? <laughs> no, no, I'm pretty sure that that does not get you laid. I mean, this this guy seems pretty adamant about hanging on to that title. So there's got to be some perks. $500. You win $500 for being Mr. Ugly. There should be more than that. <laughs> I, and they started a riot because the guy who won wasn't naturally ugly. I mean, those teeth could have fallen out nat- naturally. I just quote, they, they, they actually, he actually, I am, quote, I am naturally ugly. He is not ugly. He is ugly only when he opens his mouth. I mean, you can say that about half of our politicians. Now, in contrast, this is the winner since 2012. This is the former Clearly Mr. did it for the money. I hope that's sarcasm, because I don't think somebody would rip out half their teeth for $500. Because the $500 isn't going to repair that. Well, this is the former Mr. Ugly. He doesn't seem all that ugly, honestly. No. No, I, he doesn't strike me as... This is... Is it just me, or does this seem like a very American thing to happen? Well, I mean, we have the ugliest dog competition. Ex- yeah! It's- we don't do, I mean, to my knowledge, we don't do that to people. We just do it to poor, unsuspecting, innocent creatures that don't know any better. But they don't care. Dogs don't care if you think they're ugly, as long as you love them and feed them and give them belly rubs. They don't care if you think they're ugly. As long as they're nice to them. People care if you think they're ugly. That's the difference. We're exporting our stupidity, Tara. And only $500. <laughs> Those bitches on Miss America get like a $50,000 scholarship. And pretty people have it easier anyway. I just... it. Don't, don't emulate us. Don't emulate us. No, we're horrible. We're awful. One of my one of my friends in London, we were talking about Black Friday today on Facebook, and she said Black Friday has become a thing in England, which pisses her off because they don't do Thanksgiving. So it's a completely meaningless holiday. Yep. But it started to work its way over there, and there's no reason for it. Like nobody's off from school, nobody's off of work. There's literally no reason, but all of a sudden over there, Black Friday is a thing, and it kind of really pisses them off. It, it wouldn't be a thing if you just didn't go. Yeah. Well, now half the stores are opening at like three o'clock on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Because fuck retail workers. Don't shop on Thanksgiving. I will fucking judge you, everybody. So Just eat turkey and fight with your family like everybody else. So our next one is from Philadelphia. And you would think that if you're going to commit a crime, you would either a attempt to cover to, you know, conceal your identity or B, not commit a crime while you're wearing something that really does not keep a low profile. And this one, he fails at both. He, he completely fails at both. Man in Incredibles costume punches cab driver, dodges fair. Mr. Incredible would never do that. That's a totally not incredible thing to do. It's a douchebag thing to do. 
And That's it's more like a Deadpool thing to do. It is, of course, from Halloween. Philadelphia police are asking for the public's help. Their attempt to identify a suspect wanted for robbery. It's 3.48 in the morning of October 31st when the victim, 62-year-old cab driver, picked up the suspect and a female companion at Front and Spring Garden Streets. The driver took them to a 7-Eleven. The pair went inside, made a purchase in the store. They exited the store and walked away from the taxi without paying the fare. Uh, when the taxi driver said he was calling the police, the suspect allegedly punched him in the face and fled. Now, a couple of things. Number one, you're going to get remembered in that outfit. You Also, when your getaway plan is walking away from a car? Yeah. Not a great plan. Oh, and there's he and his girlfriend had the matching outfits. Yeah, no one's going to forget going to forget that. Real easy. Um there was no way this was going to work. On top of that, he's not even wearing the mask. No. Which the entire point in the Incredibles, they had to conceal their identities because you yeah, remember the whole speech about the mask is your greatest weapon, your identity, and he's not even fucking wearing the mask. I hate. So he's stupid. He's a dick. And he's a and fake geek. And he's not even canon. He's not. Even, he did. He didn't even watch the movie. No. He didn't even fucking watch the movie. That might be the most offensive part. Yeah. No, the assault on a. <laughs> Innocent person, it's the most offensive part by far. But the second most offensive part might be that he wasn't even canon appropriate. I said, you, you are, how do you get to a point in your life when you're wearing that? And With you. The fake abs and all. And I love that first picture is there. He's adjusting his crotch. All that, class. All class. That's the and you're wearing that, and you punch someone old enough to be your grandfather in the face. Because you don't want to, you did not want to pay your cab fare. At least he wasn't dressed like Captain America, then I'd be really mad. You say that, and it's going to happen. I will find them. <laughs> Oh, this is, it, I just got to say, if this is the sequel, they're, they're, I'm not impressed so far. <laughs> yeah, that story's really gone. Jack-Jack grew up to be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Who saw that coming? Speaking of dicks, and hey, it's another social media. <laughs> oh. It's a dick on social media? That doesn't seem special enough for us. Well, kids, all right. Number one, don't drive drunk. Do not do not fucking, don't fucking drive drunk. Don't do it. You saw what happened with that truck full of beer, ran over a guy. But, and if you end up driving drunk, pull over, stop. Don't be out there. Don't. Don't. Don't get a master plan. Because it's probably going to go exactly like this. Woman allegedly dials 911 to lure police away from her location so she can drive home drunk. Oh my god, this is like right near me. Wayne, New Jersey, in an apparent attempt to mislead officers, a woman called 911, sending a police car away from her location so she could drive home intoxicated. Haley Oates reported 911 dispatchers that a woman was being assaulted at a bar in northern New Jersey. Oates said the assailant was in a blue truck, quickly ended the call. Um, Oates reportedly posted to social media, LMAO, two minutes later the cop peels out, silly piggies, tricks are for you. First of all, it's silly rabbit, you fucking moron. Yeah. Second, don't do that. Third, if you pulled off the con, don't post it to Facebook. Because guess, guess how they found her. Guess how they found her. You won. Just, just can you guess, can you guess, can you guess how they found her? Facebook. 
Uh, according to NewJersey.com, detectives were tipped off. The call was a false report and later found the social media post that led them to Oats. Because, you know, they, they trace those calls. They track the number you're calling from and they keep it. What the heck? Lady! Fuck you! All right, first of all, you, you were so determined to drive drunk that you were willing to call 911 then take a, a cab. And that's the thing, like, you're an asshole. Because it wasn't, wow, I didn't realize I was too drunk to drive. It was, I knew I was too drunk to drive. And I decided to try and be sneaky about it. You're a dick. And I hope your car forever, ever smells of vomit. Just, no. Fucking, duh. Why would you do that? Because you're a moron. And an asshole. Just, th the bar will give you a cab. You gotta pay for it, but they'll call you a cab. Well, apparently, if you just lure the cab to the 7-Eleven and then punch them, you don't have to pay for it. Don't do that to cabbies. And yeah, look. If trying to make a living, that's a dangerous job. Look at this entitled mugshot she's got going on there. Just like. What? No. Fuck you, lady. Fuck you, jail. Also, her eyebrows need some work. I'm just saying. <laughs> Tara! I'm just saying. The magic marker eyebrow look, not a good look. Fuck you, jail. But we, we do have someone who can top that. Who? All right. We, we've often said on this show, a gun is not a remote control for life. No, it is not. And you know what? To be fair, many people seem to have taken that to heart. They've decided that a bomb threat is a remote control for life. Yeah. Police say man made hospital bomb threat when he was upset about missing a child's birth. <gasps> Please tell me he didn't think he could delay the labor, because that's not how that works. A Utah man is accused of calling it a hospital bomb threat because he was upset he couldn't attend his child's birth. Fox 13 reports that nurses told officers they believed a man phoned in a threat because he wanted his wife to wait to deliver the baby until he arrived that's from Idaho. That that's not how that works. It's not like the cervix just closes back up. That's not how that works. When baby come, baby come. Baby don't fucking care what your schedule is. That's, that's not how that works. Authorities say in court documents that his wife told investigators Moreland made the bomb threat because he was upset he couldn't be there for the, ver for the birth. That's a... Do you know what happens if you call a bomb threat in a hospital? You are putting people at risk of death. Yeah, there's people on machines that are keeping them alive that they then have to figure out how to move. They scramble. They're like, holy shit, we have to get this person not here, but they have to be talking, hooked up to this air puppy thingy. And somewhere there's a woman <clears throat> holding a baby thinking... My God, half of your DNA belongs to this fucking shit stain. What have I done? Wait, yeah, just... Uh, you wanted his wife to wait. That's... <laughs> did he think... That's just not how that works. Did he think she was spiting him or something? He, oh, here's the thing. If you cannot wrap your head around the basics, the basics of like, how is Babby formed? 
you should not be having sex, particularly not unprotected sex. I don't care if you're married. If you if you are unaware that once labor starts, labor generally doesn't stop. You can't you can't call it you can't call a fucking time out. You can't. You can now schedule your birth. You can plan to be induced. You can plan to have a C-section. But if you don't do that, you are at that baby's mercy. And it's actually kind of a good thing because for the next few years, you will be at the mercy of that tiny, totally unreasonable dictator. So get it's used to, to it. start out that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's. On the other hand, this kid is going to have one of those. You, you know how your parents keep your newspaper on the day you're born? Yeah. This kid's going to have a great one. Yeah. See, my dad didn't share this problem. I was the last of three. So they called him and told him that my mom was in labor. And he said, all right, tell me when she's done. I'm going to make my supper. And they called him and said, you have a, you have a third daughter. Her name's Tara. And he said, all right, I'm going to finish my dinner and then I'll be over. <laughs> but he was completely they, chill about the whole thing. It's like, yeah, they didn't go in the delivery room back then. And he'd done this twice before. So he was like, cool, let me know. Let me, let me eat my dinner and I'll come meet her. That's fine. <laughs> I don't blame him. I got a kid. That's uh, that's good. That's good. You could eat a nice dinner at home or you could sit in an uncomfortable waiting room for a couple of hours. <laughs> Have your damn dinner. Uh, this this kid is gonna have a great birthday every day every year at his birthday when his dad comes around yeah he's never gonna forget that shit which you is are now the bomb threat baby why you should never do this when it comes to your kids because you have got to be the limiting line to tell them no on things Mm -hmm. And you have you before the kid is even out of the uterus, you have ceded your moral authority. You have lost the high yeah. ground. Hey, yeah. you can't ground that kid ever. You're like, hey, remember the time you called in a bomb threat? Fuck you. Because you wanted me to stay in the uterus for a little bit longer. Talk about your helicopter parenting. <laughs> Like bad enough, you're trying to you try to control like what your kids studies and where they go to school. You tried to control when that poor little kid got born with a bomb threat. I hope he learns his lesson and just doesn't keep doing this over and over again. Yeah, be like, Dad, we're gonna be late for little league. Don't worry, you got to handle bomb threat. Uh, I I don't like people. <laughs> Just full stop. I don't like people. I don't. I don't like people. So I guess our our first our first uh what we learned tonight, the first thing we learned tonight is bomb threats are not a way to control life. No. They are a way to go to jail. Also, birth doesn't work that way. No, it, it's, it's, you cannot, there's no pause. It's not like live TV. You can't pause that shit. Not how it works. I know we've become very spoiled. Because we can pause live TV now. We can watch stuff on our phones. We can pretty much control our media. Not, not childbirth. We have not yet mastered how to DVR that. We have learned that social media will be the criminal's undoing. Stop posting. Yeah, well, no, not it's, don't do it in the first fucking place, but the victory lap. It's not going to serve you well. No. We've learned that you know, your fiendish disguise probably should include a mask and be inconspicuous yeah because that dude kind of stands out just a wee bit also if you're going to commit crimes dressed as a superhero at least commit crimes dressed as a superhero who would commit a crime you know what i've never we've never seen we've never seen someone dressed as a supervillain committing a crime yeah like never. at least dress like a character that would pull a dick move like that 
I have never won. We have never won. That's fucking Tony Stark. Tony Stark would do that shit. Uh, We've never had, like, somebody dressed as the Green Goblin robbing a convenience store or some shit. Yeah. You know, they always dress as the heroes. Do you even comic books? You're doing it wrong. We have learned that first world problems should probably stay in the first world. Don't don't export that shit. And being ugly isn't as valuable as being pretty, I guess. I mean, I guess we kind of all knew that. We've learned that it, probably you should not steal something you do not know how to properly operate. No. Even if it says beer on it. You could just take some of the beer. And not get run the fuck over. Because, logically speaking, how much beer can you really drink before you die? Not an 18-wheeler's full. That sounds not like a that challenge. Beer. That sounds like a challenge. You cannot drink that much beer and not die. Someone listening right now is going to go, Bullshit, I'll show you. Your body cannot physically hold that much beer. <clears throat> yeah, that you, you've just thrown a gauntlet, Tara. Don't do that. You, you just threw in a gauntlet. This is you throwing a gauntlet. You threw it. The gauntlet thrown. I don't think our fans are that stupid. They never do any of the other shit I tell them to. They haven't sent you freaky porn or their favorite sex toys, have they? No. Nobody does any of the other shit I ask them to do that I actually want them to do. Why would they do this? Because you don't want them to do it. Well, all right. Fair point. And finally, we've learned... There is a fine line between ingenuity and stupidity. Yeah. (laughs) I've just got to put that picture up again because it's beautiful. (laughs) Because he was so close. (laughs) You were almost there, buddy. So close. You were so close. You were like last lap. Miles ahead of the rest of the field, and then you blew it. You know, if he had lovingly, painstakingly handcrafted a wheel from a log. Fuck, if he had just sliced a big tree yeah. of appropriate size, carved a hole in it, it didn't have to be pretty. But <laughs> at least the right shape would have been would have been really good. He's he's pretty much the, the, the same. I get this mindset too when I'm when I'm building stuff. It's ah fuck it, it works. <laughs> That's good enough. Ah eh, fuck it, it works. That's the reason my childhood home, like half of the light switches and locks were upside down. Because my dad would get it all put together and realize it was upside down and be like, whatever, it works, fine. <laughs> We're learning a lot about you, Tara. It functioned, so who cared if it was, you know, conventionally correct? <sighs> Hi, kitty. Look who came back. Hey. Hey. Hi. I will not look at camera. No. I'm not your dancing monkey. I will not perform for you. I will not be exploited. Look over here. <laughs> No, I'm going to do it. Nope. No, fuck you. Nope. No, fuck you. You want me to be just like Bridget? Fuck Bridget. We were talking about this the other day. I don't think Miracle would like Bridget very much. I don't think Miracle likes Miracle very much. Oh, Miracle loves Miracle. <laughs> Miracle is Miracle is Miracle's biggest fan, aren't you? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> 